Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna break down how to read a call sheet. So for those that don't know, a call sheet is a production document that lays out everything that's going to be filmed the next day. So when, where, who, what. Call sheets look different from production to production, but they generally follow a similar template. And once you know how to read one, you're pretty much good for all the other ones that'll come across. I've met a lot of people that have misread a call sheet and have showed up too late or too early or to the wrong location or we're just completely unprepared for the scenes that we were going to shoot that day. So it's really, really important to learn how to read a call sheet, especially if this is your first shoot, you wanna be as prepared as possible. So if you're not sure how to read a call sheet, this video is for you. In general, call sheets are emailed to the cast and crew. Sometimes if you already started shooting, they will give you a printed copy and they're like printed on this really long paper, not normal size paper. But most of the time to save money, save paper, they just email them to everybody. So I'm going to use a call sheet that I actually used for a production that I was a part of a long time ago. All the information, like the private information is redacted, but everything that you need to know is still there. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that now. Okay, so this call sheet, it obviously says first unit call sheet, so that means that there are two different units or more than one unit. Basically, first unit means it's the primary unit, so that's usually where the main cast, the main director, the main um, cinematographer is, and then the second unit is kind of a different unit that's maybe capturing b-roll or another scene that isn't super high profile i took out the name of the production but usually the production name is here sometimes they all have like a cool logo that the production is using or just the name written up on there so here we have the shoot date so this is the date that it took place the number of days that we're filming so here it was 11 out of 12 so it was almost completely done. It has a nice little outline of when breakfast is being served, when lunch will be served, when you can expect sunrise and sunset. That's really important if you're filming outside or if you're trying to do something that has to do with the light, golden hour, things like that. The weather's on there, so that's nice to know just because if you are working outside or in certain conditions, you wanna know, hey, should I bring a raincoat? Should I bring shorts and a hat? You know, all those types of things that you need to know to be best prepared, that's on there. Nearest hospital, that's super important. A lot of call sheets always have that just in case something does go wrong and you need to know how to get help immediately. Nearest hospital's right there. Okay, so this right here, call 7 a.m. That is a general call. So that means in general, this is when we're starting. But don't get that confused with your personal call time. This is something that a lot of people get wrong. They mistakenly think that 7 a.m. that is when everybody is starting, everybody's showing up, but that's not the case. Because if everybody showed up at 7 a.m., then it'd be crazy, a lot of stuff wouldn't be prepared. Obviously, if breakfast is at 6.30, 7 a.m. wouldn't make sense for everybody to show up. So if you take a look at the back of the call sheet, or sometimes it's the second page of the call sheet, it will tell you your personal call time. Like I said, I redacted a lot of the information. It'll tell you the position, the name of that person, and their phone number, and then their call time. And that's all super important because like, what if that person doesn't show up? You wanna pull up their phone number right away, call them, or you're looking for the production manager and you don't know who that is, there you know you have their name, you have their number. All that information is usually on the back of the call sheet or at the bottom of the call sheet if it's a super small call sheet, just depending on the template that's being used. For example, if you are the costume designer, your name would be right here, and then your phone number would be right there, and then your call time is right there. As you can see, a lot of people do have a 7 a.m. call time, but then there's some people that have a 6 a.m. call time or a 6.30 a.m. call time. Or a lot of times you'll also see OC, O slash C next to their name, and that just means they're on call. So up in the corner, you'll also see the producer, the director, the first AD, a lot of important people up here and their phone numbers will be there as well. The production office, the, the phone number, and the address will be there as well. We've got some important notes here. So 
breakfast served at 6 30 to 7 so if you want to get breakfast you don't need to but if you want to show up at that time make sure that you're there at that time and then we go down to what is actually being shot that day here you'll see a bunch of numbers these are scene numbers so if you do have the script you can see all the scene numbers and what the scene is about but here we have a little bit of a description so interior chair area Jackie and hostages talk about the pictures so that's a very small description if you read the script or if you know anything about the story maybe that gives you a perfect idea and then right next to character number we have all these numbers so all these numbers are related to a person so we have one two three four five six seven those are people that are going to be in the scene. If you scroll down here, there's a whole cast breakdown down here. You can see all these numbers, so there's one through nine. And then next to that, you have the name of the actor, and then you have their character name. One is usually the lead, the main actor. Then you got two, their main co-stars, and it just keeps going down and down and down until you're done with the entire cast. That is what this is referring to. So one through seven, so that means everyone from Lindsay to Ben are gonna be in that scene. Right here, D slash N means, is it a day shot or a night shot? All of these shots except these two are day shots, those are night shots. Then down here, it explains how fat is this scene in relation to a script page. So here, this shows that this scene that we're filming is six pages and seven eighths. So basically almost seven pages that we're filming right up in the beginning of the morning. And then the location, chair area, prison theater, so that just generally tells you the address of where we're filming. If there's a um, company move, which means that we're filming in one location and then we gotta wrap everything up and film in a completely different location, that's a company move. If that's the case, then you will see a completely different location and address for that new scene. There are no company moves, it looks like. May there's a few different locations within the same prison theater that we're filming. But yeah, at the end, we're shooting for 10 pages and 1 eighth. So that's a lot. <laughs> um, generally, that's a lot. You know, if you're shooting an indie film or if you're shooting a lot of dialogue and, and it seems like a lot of pages, but really it's not, you know, that's where you kind of figure out scheduling. So that is what's being shot. And then down below, like I showed you earlier, that is the cast. So you know their numbers now, you know who they are, their character that they're playing. And now this information over here is kind of interesting. So SWHF, it stands for start, work, hold, finish. But start, work, hold, finish are basically detailing the status of that actor. So if, it, if any of these had an S on this section, that means that that was their first day of filming, their starting work. If they only had W's like some of these, then they're working, they've been on set before, they are just continuing to film. Hold, um, we're holding them. And F would mean they're finished. So this will be their final day. This is the last day before they wrap. MU means makeup. So this is the time that they need to be on the set to do their makeup. So 7.15 to 7.30. And then set means that's when they have to be ready for set. So basically this tells the makeup artist and anybody in charge of that actor before they get on set that they need to be there at 7.15 and in an hour they get to set. So they have an hour of makeup and wardrobe to get ready. Minor question mark just means are they a minor? No. This is really important because if they are a minor then there's more rules and more guidelines that need to be followed. And then here next to special instructions, there aren't any in this call sheet, but sometimes they will be little notes that those actors or people that work with those actors need to know. This part just kind of notates, you know, are there gonna be stand-ins? What are the notes for production as far as like grip, production, camera, makeup? Sometimes there's like special effects or special notes that need to be outlined and this is where they put them so just location they just wrote kind of the locations that we were going to be filming at 
and that was it. So there's nothing really expansive about this day that everybody needs to know about. And then an advanced shooting schedule is just generally giving you a little bit of a look into the future, like what will be shot the next day. Basically, that's the front of the call sheet. And like I showed you a little bit earlier, the back of the call sheet really just tells you who's gonna be there, how to contact them, and when they're gonna be there. So one thing I definitely want to note is that when you get a call sheet in your email, there's usually a lot of stuff in that email and then the call sheet is attached. Make sure that you read everything that's in that call sheet email just because a lot of times they notate parking information, location change information, suggestions for what to wear, people to contact when you arrive. A lot of information is usually there. So definitely make sure that you read everything that has been given to you. Some call sheet etiquette is to email the person back and don't reply all. Just reply to the person that emailed it to you and say that you got it, you received it, thank you and that lets them know that you have received the call sheet. Most of the time, it'll even tell you in the body of the email, like, let me know that you have received this call sheet. It's just kind of normal production etiquette. If you are a PA, if you're a production assistant and this is, you're preparing for your first shoot, I definitely recommend you take a look at my video, um, five things that every PA should have. It outlines a lot of important things that you should have with you on your first production shoot. It'll make you feel more prepared, make you look more prepared and confident in what you're doing. So definitely take a look at that video if you haven't already. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are doing your own production and you want a template to use, I've linked to a couple in the description. So definitely take a look at that. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.